So, you have now taken care of having at least some capacity to protect your respiratory organs, as well as the ability to breathe with a reasonable level of safety during a bug out situation, and possibly beyond that bug out, the question is now, what do you pack next? The next range of items will focus on your ability and capacity to survive in an outside environment, or even in a closed environment, where you will face the possibility of being exposed to extreme temperatures, bone chilling, or body cooking weather, unknown environmental conditions, and sometimes even human-induced conditions that will make it impossible for you to inhabit a conventional sheltered environment. I am referring to the three hours without shelter rule. This rule concerns the basic principle of having some form of shelter or ability to keep your core body temperature within its safe zone so that your vital organs can continue functioning. Shelter often refers to a place of some sorts that provides protection, whether permanent or temporary, from weather or danger. Shelter also implies a condition where you are shielded and made to feel reasonably protected from the effects of the weather, or made to feel reasonably safe from any danger that may have an adverse impact on your person or well-being. With that being said, the first shield that humans created, or rather stole, to shelter themselves from these anticipated adverse impacts is the clothes that we wear. Yes, granted that these days, the wearing of clothes is more to portray an image or to make a statement, and also granted that in some cases, some people choose to go full commando to also make a statement, but think of that first human who decided that, unlike the highly strategic animals and birds who cleverly used and manipulated their own furs and feathers to shield themselves from the weather. The only way for him or her to have an immediate shield, that would also shelter his or her skin from the weather, was for him or her to permanently borrow the same furs, and maybe a few feathers to create, what we now call clothes. Fast forward to now. We wear winter woolies, raincoats, ballistic vests, firefighting clothing ensembles, socks, and various other types of apparel, including footwear, just to clothe our body and protect it from the weather, from flying bullets, from fire, or anything else that may pose a potential threat to our well-being, or be considered a danger to our immediate person, should that body part be left uncovered or unshielded. As a prepper, having shelter and being shielded, starts with clothes, or apparel if you wish. In some situations, you will have to evacuate with the clothing on your back. In that case, you may expect to wear the same clothing for an extended period of time. Where you have ample pre-warning, it is good practice to leave a set of appropriate clothing in one quick grab spot so that you can change quickly before you bug out, the clothing should preferably be of the outdoor type, that is, a strong tactical pants, not jeans, a t-shirt, a long-sleeved outdoor shirt, a jacket with rain hood, and a cap or beanie. Also keep a pair of outdoor shoes, not your favorite sport shoe, and a pair of thick socks in proximity to your bug out bag so that you can put on the shoes quickly before you exit, whichever the scenario, you will need to have a spare set of clothing of the same type as I just described already packed inside your bug out bag. Also pack an emergency poncho, to protect the clothes on your back from getting wet if it rains, a set of decent leather or outdoor tactical gloves with good palm, and, anti-cut protection, in case you have to crawl, or as a precaution against cuts in the event you have to find your way in the dark, as well as a scarf or schmog. The schmog is a scarf-type wrap commonly used in the Middle East and other arid regions that provides protection from exposure to the sun. When worn properly, it also protects the mouth and eyes from dust and sand, you can find a host of YouTube videos on how to tie and wear the schmog properly. You will also need to have a decent sleeping bag, and a blanket, and at least some form of ground cover to prevent ground moisture from wetting your sleeping bag. Should you be purchasing a new sleeping bag, look for one that is relevant to the typical climate that is predominant in your area, travel route, or targeted bug out region, throughout any of the four seasons. A good tarpaulin is essential. A tarpaulin or tarp, is simply a sheet of waterproof fabric that can be attached with a guide line, that is, a good cord or string, to trees, poles, your vehicle, rocks, or any other firm and stable object to anchor against in order to form a shelter. Regardless of the material used in its construction, whether traditional canvas, nylon, or plastic, the tarp must be strong, flexible, tear-resistant, water-resistant, or completely waterproof. For purposes of your bug-out bag, a good-sized tarp should be at least 260 cm by 260 cm or 102 inches by 102 inches in size when opened. A tarp will have certain disadvantages when compared to a fully enclosed tent. It does however have certain advantages. For instance, when faced with stormy weather, the tarp could be pitched in a safe area by taking advantage of barriers and terrain slope, where you can pitch it closer to the ground for better protection against wind and rain. In hot weather, it can be set up higher for better ventilation while still providing protection from the sun. A tarp offers great flexibility of use where a tent cannot. For instance, you can use a tarp to wrap around yourself, 
You can use it as a poncho, you can use it for water collection, and, depending on its color, you can use it for signaling. You can use a tarp for screening off an area to shield against wind or harmful airborne contaminants, or covering up your gear and yourself. If you have a camouflage-colored tarp, it will assist in providing anti-detection. You can also use a tarp as a makeshift stretcher, and, in some cases even as a makeshift boat to get across a body of water by just using leafy branches and sticks, arranged as a central circular wrapping point for the tarp. However, be extremely careful, this is a skill that requires know-how and practice. Don't try it unless you know what you are doing, or that same tarp could be your final shroud. One unavoidable disadvantage with a tarp, is that you will be open to invasion from certain insects, especially those infernal mosquitoes. But regardless of whether you have a tent or a tarp, or both for that matter, a well-packed bug-out bag will have insect repellent to ward off these determined invaders, as swearing and cursing an insect that has no understanding of what you are screaming about, can only take you so far. To complement your tarp or tent, invest in a good rope that is rated for outdoor use. At the same time, I strongly suggest that you invest in a good length of paracord, the full name is parachute cord. Paracord is good to have because of its lightweight construction, durability, and versatility in using it for applications where a thicker rope might not be suitable. One benefit of having paracord in your bug out bag is that, depending on the type of cord, you can strip the inside of the cord, that is, the yarns comprising the center of the cord and use these yarns for other survival applications. As part of its construction, some paracord yarns include a fishing line, a wire which can be used for setting snares or traps, or a yarn that can be used as tinder for starting a fire. But, be careful of fake paracord. A rope or paracord by itself, is just a rope or paracord. You will need to learn a few basic knots that will give the rope or paracord function and purpose. That shoelace knot or tie knot that you have known all your life is not going to keep your shelter tied down. One of the basic knots that you should learn to tie is the reef or square knot. This is an end knot that is used for joining two equal diameter lines together, like two pair cords to make them longer. Another invaluable knot is the bow line knot. The bow line knot is used to form a fixed loop or eye at the end of the rope for fastening and securing loads, and for rescue operations, where someone can grab onto the fixed loop, or put the loop over their body and be pulled to safety. Then there is the clove hitch, or double clove hitch. This hitch knot is used to secure your lines around a series of posts, branches, or trees when you want the running end of your line to be adjustable. Lastly, there is the sheet bend. This knot is used for joining lines of different diameters, or of different construction materials together. If you do not know these knots or forgotten how to tie them, rest easy. There are a multitude of websites and YouTube videos that show you step by step. These basic knots are easy to master by any beginner, including children, and in fact can be learned in a day. You will need to have a survival saw, or a decent survival knife that can perform as a saw. This would be necessary where you need to cut tree branches to prop up your tarp or something else. Obviously, the saw or knife would be handy for cutting firewood as well, and for protection purposes. A survival saw can mean many things to many people. For some, it is a small, hardened steel saw with extremely sharp teeth that cuts on both push and pull, and then folds back into its handle when not in use. For others, a survival saw could mean a chain, a serrated link or wire saw that has grab handles on both ends, and rolls up to fit into your pocket, or a small pouch. A few space blankets is another must. The first aid kit that you bought would have come with a space blanket. Get a few more, they are cheap. Known as a first aid blanket, emergency blanket, reflective blanket, or mylar blanket, a space blanket has one side tinted in silver, it looks like kitchen foil, the other side is usually in a gold or orange color. However, this blanket is not your typical kitchen foil, in first aid, a space blanket is used to prevent or counter the effects of hypothermia, that is, when the body temperature drops to an abnormally low level, and the body is unable to produce enough heat to counter the heat that it is losing. Its design reduces the heat loss in a person's body, which would otherwise occur due to thermal radiation, water evaporation, or convection. By design, the silver side must be facing your body to reflect and trap your body heat, up to 90%, that would otherwise have been dissipated, to help prevent shock and hypothermia. There are added uses for a space blanket, especially when you are in a bind. For instance, if you have no option but to sleep inside your vehicle, and it's freezing outside, you can fix the space blanket against your windscreen or other windows from the inside of your vehicle with the silver side of the blanket facing inwards, towards you. 
This will assist in insulating and reflecting your own body heat back inside the car and creating at least some warmth. You can also easily use it as a quick shelter against rain and snow, as a sort of improvised tarp. If you have to huddle around a small fire to keep warm, you can open it and create a screen around yourself and the fire. When the silver side faces away from you, it can be used to deflect heat away from your body. An added benefit of the space blanket is that its silver side flashes in the sun, and it can be used as a signaling device to attract attention to your location, whether for help or regrouping. For now, I have tried to focus only on the concept of shelter as it relates to your ability to maintain the conditions in which you are shielded, and, made to feel reasonably protected from the effects of the weather, or feeling reasonably safe from any danger that may have an adverse impact on your person, or well-being should you not have that shelter. From the clothes that provide you with an immediate form of shelter, to having that tarp or tent, that sleeping bag, or that ability to cut out and make a shelter for yourself, to having something as simple as a space blanket, these are not hard to figure out, but they still require your personal commitment to getting it right from the outset. Having a decent outdoor rope of suitable length, and, or, that parachute cord gives you better advantages and solutions when it comes to sheltering options. Learning a few basic knots increases this advantage not only to make sure that your shelter does not fly off to greener pastures, but also, for other events where life is at stake. Remember bugging out comes with its dangers. From your point of bugging out and between your targeted bug out location, there will be the unplanned, the unanticipated, and the unknown that could derail you and your bug out plan. Then it is just you, and your bug out bag. So, sort out these basics first. Get packing or repacking. In the next video, I will cover the other basic supporting elements that you will need to have in your bug out bag that will enhance your sheltering abilities during a bug out and beyond. As always, think prepared, act prepared, be prepared. Subscribe to the South African Prepper. Like and share my videos with your family, friends, and colleagues since we are all in this together. Here you get real information, and fact-based insights and guidance. I don't do opinion or BS. Preparedness is not a hobby. It is a way of life that could save your life.